Hello my friends, welcome to another video. My name is Matt and today I'm going to show you how I generated this image inside 3ds Max with Tide Diffusion. Let's go. Let's start with examining the scene. I have here a pretty straightforward beach scene where I had these little houses copied and instanced over from a model I found. And we have our very simple plane for the water and that is literally just a blue surface. We can improve on the water later, but I'll show you right now how simple this can be. And I had this idea of having something with as little effort as I could put into, but add a nice complex background of this golf course. And so not only do I add it in my prompt, but you can see that I simply took a photo of a golf course and overlaid it in this plane where it's within my camera to showcase, plus these little pools, little detail like the boats, something really quick that I could just do in a morning for a demonstration. If you had this as a client rendering and you wanted to just generate 10 images, then I think this would be a great approach where you just could conceptualize some, some time of day, some cameras and something to present really quickly to your client. And so here we're using the image to image setting because we're taking our viewport. And as you can see, it says viewport color and we're using a denoise of 50%. So it's 0.5, but the way I like to think of it is that 50% of the viewport is being part of the image, and then along the other 50% are the prompts. And we have our prompts basically contain all the words that we want in this scene. That's why it's able to pick up on this golf course. And that's why it knows that the golf course isn't here, that this is water because I've colored it blue. And then the golf course has a little bit of this structure to it. If we just had this green, it might not show up the same. But anyways, that's the idea is to present uh, some clues to the AI of what you're trying to achieve. Now you can see the water isn't very good. So you might want to do a really low denoise for your houses or your subject, and then for your context, crank it up to 0.7. And then when we go to generate that image, so you can see this has a lot more structure to where the pool is actually with the pool. You know, maybe that one's kind of hidden, so it's a little bit hard to see, but it really fits within our uh, viewport. If we go up to 0.7, this is where the water is going to look great, but we're going to lose some of the accuracy in our background. And you can see now it's not really interpreting it as a, as the golf course anymore. So this is going to make the water great. So we're going to we're going to maybe piece these together in Photoshop, taking the best elements out of it that we like. And this will be more of a conceptual image, more closer to a rendering, uh, definitely away from the, the viewport. So let me just hide that. Definitely something more of a rendering. And this is where you would want to then go through and look at a different camera angle to present. Maybe we'll go back a little bit near some of that rock. We don't want to get any of those errors in the back that we have. So we're going to generate from here. So I mean, I think this is really cool that how little you can provide in order to achieve all of this great detail. It could be a good way to also do some texture baking on your sand or your water. And so there's another view. It's, it's, it's a pretty good match. The umbrellas came through a little bit. Again, they don't line up perfectly, but the idea is that, yeah, we're just giving concepts, working on camera views. Part of the reason we're able to get such beautiful images out of this model is because no matter what checkpoint you use, it still doesn't have very specific information for these particular aerials that we're trying to do. In this case, I'm pairing it with my Laura that I've trained for the Greek Isles, and these are resorts, houses, they have some golf courses, lots of beautiful sandy beaches, lots of umbrellas, and importantly, this beautiful turquoise crystal clear water. So while that is in my prompt, if I don't engage the Laura here, previously I had it turned on, settings go from 0.65 to 0.95, and when it's turned on, you get the results you saw. But if I take it off, this is the kind of results you get. This is actually the uh, this is at 0.65. Yeah, so even at 0.8, you can see that the checkpoint alone just doesn't contain enough information for this specific type of imagery. And you can try whatever checkpoint you want. So that's part of the reason I've been making these LoRa's. And my Greek model is free. You can find it on Civit AI or on my website. And there is a Flux and an SDXL model. And I'm using the SDXL model here. Let's say, for example, that you're further along in your rendering and you already have some shaders applied and you have your water. Well, your water in your viewport 
will cut out, might often look like this compared to how your render looks. So if you have the exact same image that you're, you were working on and you render it out, you can save this image and then you'll have a much nicer material palette to work from as opposed to just the viewport. It's still going to use the depth from the viewport, but instead on your image to image, that flat blue texture, it's going to use this nice, beautiful gradient that I've established here. Close your rendering window. I'm using uh, GPU rendering, so it will take up the same resources as Tide Diffusion. So close that. And then here in this tab, go to image to image, and then source is the image. Before we were on viewport color, go to images, load your image here to match. We can use a lower to noise now because we have a little more information to provide to Staple Diffusion. So I'm down to 0.45. And then what I'm doing now is just taking the rendering, which had that beautiful shading and a little more texture here. And also the pool showed up a lot more uh, easily. And that's the image I'm using to diffuse as opposed to the viewport. Now it's still using the depth from our viewport, but they're using the, the image instead of the viewport for diffusion. Before I wrap up, I wanted to show you what I would do normally after I finished with Max and Tide Diffusion. And to make the thumbnail for this video, I would want to polish and enhance the image we generated a little further. So for that, I loaded Forge and dragged our generation inside here. And then I used a complex prompt to describe it. And here are my settings. Forge is free and I install it using Stability Matrix. So I recommend checking that out. I have a video about that you can find on my page. And so here we have our settings and that will just regenerate this image. And I went a little larger as well to 1900 pixels. And the thing I'm gonna do now is I have to make a second video to show this new upscaler. I've designed my own upscaler and down here it's called uh, Regional Prompt Upscaler. So once I finish this, you can check out the video about how to do some upscaling from your generations. So consider checking that out and I hope you found it useful. Take it easy. Peace.